Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today's video I am going to be talking about the new Disney live action adaptation of Aladdin and I will be doing a portrait of Jasmine because the actress they picked for her is stunning. She's gorgeous. I loved it. Um, I did enjoy the movie. I know it's received some mixed reviews, but uh, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, what I wish they did differently, that kind of stuff. Uh, for reference, since I don't know exactly when I'm putting this out as I film this intro here, I am filming this intro on June 17th. I'm going to get my thoughts down on paper pretty soon before I forget. My husband and I just saw it last night on June 16th. A little late to the party, but we don't like to go when the theater's too busy. And yeah, let's go. <laughs> this piece took a lot longer than I anticipated, but I also made it a lot more complicated than I originally planned. At first, I was just going to do a realistic portrait of Naomi Scott as Jasmine in pastel, but then I started thinking about doing a half-and-half -half portrait with the animated Jasmine character, so I sketched both. Once I had both of them sketched, I didn't want to combine them anymore, so I decided to draw both completely, but no matter how I positioned them, the piece just didn't feel balanced. So then I decided to make it a trio and also added in animated Raja. I was finally happy with the layout then, but I also realized at that point I didn't want to do it in pastel anymore. I asked around on some of my Amino communities how people would want to see it rendered, and I got almost exclusively either marker or colored pencil. And those are both what I was leaning toward anyway. What you're watching me do now, obviously, is marker. I laid down a base of marker for both the Naomi Jasmine and the background, but I finished Anime Jasmine and Raja entirely in marker, then hyped up the styling with fine liners and white gel pens. Next, you'll see me render Naomi's Jasmine in a slightly more realistic style using colored pencils. And then for a final touch, I'll cover the background in a layer of yellow gold Gansai Tambi from the Kuratake Starry Colors palette. So yeah, it turned out to be quite the mixed media endeavor. The paper is just simple 110 pound cardstock, by the way. Uh, the same heavy cardstock I use for larger marker pieces. I don't remember the brand. It was just the cheapest heavyweight smooth cardstock I could find in the scrapbooking section at Michael's <laughs> when I was looking last year. Oh goodness. Okay. Sorry if you can hear Dorothy chattering in the background. She's supposed to be napping. <laughs> So as I mentioned in the intro, <laughs> so as I mentioned in the intro, I'd like to do a bit of a film review and talk about the live action Aladdin, and I think I'll comment a bit on Disney live action remakes in general. But first, if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday at minimum, and I have bonus videos some weeks as well. July was a great month for bonuses on this channel, so if you're interested, do go check those out. I talked about Canada Day, July 1st on the 1st, and how the holiday differs here in Newfoundland. On the 14th, I reviewed the new Ohuhu brush markers, which I did end up using heavily on this piece. And then just this past Friday, on the 26th, I participated in yet another YTAC group upload date with my phobias themed piece on porphyrophobia. And for the Good Omens fans out there, I did a watercolor portrait of David Tennant's Crowley in an 80s David Bowie inspired color palette for my 4th of July video as well. That fell on a Thursday, so it wasn't a bonus, but I think I think because it was a holiday for a large section of my audience, it didn't really get seen, so I thought I'd mention it. <laughs> I'm an art channel, if you couldn't tell, but I do like to do crafts, tutorials, and related product reviews when I get the chance as well. You'll be seeing a crafting video on Thursday this week, in fact, because I recently tried paper quilling for the first time. 
If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. I love reading your comments, and I do reply to everybody. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new Aladdin film, or any thoughts you have on other Disney live-action remakes in general. I haven't seen the new Lion King yet, but I'm really looking forward to the Little Mermaid remake they've announced. Considering Halle Bailey's a singer, I'm hoping that means it'll still be a musical like Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast were. What about you? <laughs> to talk specifically about the new Aladdin, in general, I really liked it. I thought it was really well done overall, and I like the changes made to Jasmine's character. She's much more of a strong, independent woman than the animated film made her out to be. I think she was always intended to be a strong character, but back in the early 90s when the animated film was released, of course, the social climate in Hollywood was quite different. Jasmine had her moments, but she was still very much a damsel in distress type character a lot of the time. Live action Jasmine is not. She and her handmaiden Dahlia, a new character I was really happy to see, are definitely not as suppressed and controlled by the men around them as those men might think or want them to be. <laughs> Absolutely confident that Jasmine would have eventually defeated Jafar and saved Agrabah on her own. Aladdin and Genie being there certainly sped up the process and made it cleaner, but Jasmine would have got it done one way or another. <laughs> Anime Jasmine? I'm not so sure. And of course, how could I not talk about the new Jasmine and draw her for you guys without talking about the wardrobe choices made for her? The beautiful turquoise numbers are there, but I love the fact that she's been given a wider array of looks and styles, and I love the addition of new colors and different jewelry. Let's not forget that the story of Disney's Aladdin is based on old Asian stories of Arabian Nights. The fabric, color, and style choices made for the 2019 film reflect a nice blend between Arabic and Asian influences. At times, the movie feels very Bollywood, and I love it. <laughs> the outfit I've put live-action Jasmine in for this piece is pretty close to the turquoise two-piece she wore in the dance scene, which was the film's nod to the original animated character's iconic outfit. For the jewelry, though, I've designed new pieces that are based on a combination of elements from two or three different sets she wears throughout the film. I couldn't help but include some of the pink jewels on her tiara, since I really like the pink outfits the new Jasmine wears as well. I like the fact that she doesn't exclusively wear a simple headband adorned with an impractically giant sapphire throughout the entire movie. And I like the fact that most of her garments are more modest and practical for the climate she lives in. They appear to be made of fabrics that would be light enough to handle the heat, but also covering enough to provide protection from the sun. Moving on to Aladdin himself, I like the fact that his street rat attire actually includes a shirt. <laughs> because again, climate, practicality, and just the simple fact that he would want a shirt and acquire one. Live action Aladdin is played by Mina Masood, an Egyptian-Canadian actor who's just a year older than the original film. I love the fact that they were careful to select someone of the correct geographic origin for a peasant of Agrabah. Agrabah doesn't exist, but it's clearly meant to be somewhere in northern or northeastern Africa, so an Egyptian-born actor is perfectly suited for it. And of course, I'm also a little proud of the fact that the titular role is played by a fellow Canadian citizen. <laughs> I think Mina played the character very well, and the small ways his Aladdin differs from the animated version are positive changes. Eh, except perhaps the singing. Mina certainly isn't a bad singer, but where Emma Watson struggled to impress with her vocal strengths as Belle in The New Beauty and the Beast, Mina definitely didn't bring the vocal power I expected of Aladdin. In Beauty and the Beast, Dan Stevens musically outshone Emma in a film that should have been musically led by Emma's character. In the new Aladdin, Naomi Scott musically outshone Mina in a film that was originally dominated by iconic male lead ballads. Then, of course, there's Genie. When we were all being teased with previews of the film, everyone was concerned about Will Smith's blue Genie. We were mostly only shown Genie in the cave, still blue, and it just wasn't right. 
PewDiePie followers in particular had a lot of fun photoshopping the character to look like other characters after Felix himself turned Will Smith's genie into Shrek. <laughs> I was relieved to find that in the movie, genie actually spends very little time being blue and mostly takes an entirely human look. I don't even mind the top knot despite Aladdin's disapproval. <laughs> I've also heard a lot of criticism that Will Smith wasn't allowed to be Will Smith and his fans were disappointed, but I think he and the directors worked together well to find a happy medium between paying an homage to Robin Williams' original portrayal and letting Will update it. My biggest complaint about genie scenes is actually a special effects complaint. In the parade scene, when Prince Ali is approaching the palace and genie is window hopping, the effects were not well integrated. The green screen effect is just so painfully obvious, and I think it's because they really neglected the backgrounds they put him against within the frames of the windows. Those bits, the scenes ended up feeling like an early 2000s Disney Channel sitcom than part of a 2019 feature film. But that's it. Other than that, I love the new genie. He, he'll he never replace Robin Williams, but in a world without Robin, I'll gladly take Will Smith's genie. And of course, we also need to talk about Jafar. I'm really torn about the physical appearance here. On one hand, Marwan Kunzari did an amazing job of bringing Jafar to life, and I like how his backstory got a bit more fleshed out this time. On the other hand, Jafar is supposed to be a gaunt older man, and Marwan is quite the attractive fellow who doesn't appear to be significantly older than Jasmine and Aladdin themselves. Despite everything I've just said praising the casting choice of Mina for Aladdin, I don't think I would have been disappointed with Marwan as Aladdin either. Although, of course, he'd have to shave the facial hair. <laughs> I think what I like best about the new Jafar is the explanation that he used to be a simple thief and how he's built himself up to the position he's in now. In the animated Aladdin, it's clear that Jafar is power-hungry and that he's inserted himself into his position as a stepping stone, but we don't know where he came from. Now we do. And of course, he does sing a bit in Arabian Nights with Will Smith as well. <laughs> Last, I'd like to address the animal characters. I love Raja. I think the tiger was handled very well and he's definitely true to how the original Big Cat was presented. I chose to draw Raja as the animated version in this piece to balance out the animated Jasmine and so that rendering a more realistically styled tiger didn't take away from the focal point, which is the Naomi Scott Jasmine, but I do like the CGI Raja as well. Abu and Iago both faded into the background a lot more than they did in the animated film. Abu doesn't have much of a role after the cave scene, and frankly, I don't mind one bit. Animated Abu has never been my favorite character, but I certainly like the cute little brown critter more than the CGI capuchin monkey in the new film. I'm surprised that the character is entirely CGI and that they didn't try to use an actual trained capuchin for some scenes, but I think they missed the mark rendering the character. It's a bit uncanny valley for me. He doesn't look enough like a real monkey, yet he's so different from the cartoon character. I was glad he didn't play such a big part because I certainly didn't miss his presence on screen after the cave. <laughs> Iago, on the other hand, I did miss. The 2019 Macaw is beautiful and fulfills his role as Jafar's subtle spy, but that's it. The quirky, sassy flair of the original character isn't there. He's more of a prop than a character, and I think that's a shame. I understand the choice. I don't think the original Iago would have worked with the updated story and the changes made to Jafar, but I still miss the character, and I think I'd rather have seen them drop the bird entirely than do what they did. Does anyone else feel that way? But yes, overall, I really do like the new Aladdin, and it's definitely one of the live-action remakes I actually want to add to my collection when it comes out for purchase. I enjoyed doing this Jasmine fan art piece as well, and I'm considering doing a series of pieces with the other characters, but I'm not sure if I should put the time into it. I would want to make them in the same way, and the pencil rendering of Jasmine took so long, so I'm hesitant to commit to it. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. I'm not sure what sort of talking points I would pair with other pieces to make them into videos, and with how long the pieces would take, I would have to make them into videos. 
Obviously, I should do a Mina Masood Aladdin, and I want to do a uh, Marwan Kanzari Jafar, but I'm not sure about the companions to pair with them, or whether or not I should do a Will Smith genie piece on its own. Like I said, I don't really like Abu, so I'd be tempted to put anime genie in with Mina Masood and anime Aladdin, and not give genie his own piece. But at the same time, I think Genie deserves his own piece, so then I'll, the Aladdin piece would have a boo in it. But then who would the third in the Genie piece be? Carpet? <laughs> I'm so unsure. Tell me what you want to see. But anyway, that's enough for me today, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye!